Oh man, this is a great question. You are very, very smart. I, I love this kind of question. I mean, how do you pre-qualify for any credit card easily? Let's talk about that. Stick around till the end of today's conversation because I'm going to break it down for you. I'll spill all the beans, okay? And you're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sudi Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ever ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, we want to talk about how to pre-qualify for any credit card easily. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, let's first define the most important concept. What is a pre-qualified offer? So, a, pre a pre-qualified offer is basically how a credit card issuer lets you know that you have met their initial criteria for approval before you, apply, you actually apply for a credit card, right? So, the key words here are you met their initial criteria, okay? So, you can check for pre-qualified offers on many issuers' websites. You can go on Capital One, you can go on uh, Navy Fed, you can go on Pen Fed, you can go on Chase, whatever, okay? And sometimes you can even receive in the mail what they call pre-screened credit card offers, okay? So that you basically, so the bottom line is when you have a, a pre-screened credit card offer or a pre-qualification here, you basically have a, a soft pull. In other words, your ass is not getting a hard pull, okay? So your credit is preserved. Your credit is protected. In other words, you're not going to lose 10 points. You're not losing 5 points. You are good to go. You are chilling. And I basically advise everyone. I mean everyone. I don't care if you are eight, if you are 800 or 750 or 350, whatever. You need to apply for a pre-qualification credit card offer, okay? Because you have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, boss. Nothing to lose. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, there is a difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval, okay? The thing is that you have to understand that pre-qualification means that, I mean, pre-qualification usually refers to a less formal screening that looks at your basic credit history and other personal information. Pre-approval results from a formal pre-screening on the issuer side. In other words, if somebody asks you what is the difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval, pre-approval comes on top. Pre-approval is stricter. Pre-approval is more stringent. Okay, so but in today's conversation, we are speaking about pre-qualification. Okay, and there are three ways to see if you pre-qualify for a credit card. You have pre-screen offers if you have the mail, regular mail. Okay, you can check to see if you are pre-qualified online. Yeah, you can do that, or you can go directly to the issuer. You can just uh, if you are a Pen Fed member, or Navy Fed member, or you are a Chase, you have an account with Chase, you have an account with uh, Amex. You act, they actually send you periodically, they send you links, pre-qualification links. Now, we are still talking about how to pre-qualify for any credit card easily, right? So I just explained to you what pre-qualification means. Now, you need to zero in on the card you want to pre-qualify for. If, you, if your goal is to pre-qualify for any credit card easily, you can't just be walking around and apply and pre-qualify for any credit cards, no. There are gazillions of credit cards in the whole world, boss, okay? You only have 24 hours in a day. Aren't you working? Hello? Hello? You're working, right? So if you're working, I want you to zero in on the credit card that you, you, want, that you want, okay? And, and remember, you need to identify which type of credit card you need. It's not about, see, when we talk about credit card, when we talk about credit in general, it is a game. You need to be specific. There are rules of the game. And there are, you have rights and obligations, right? So there are three general types of credit cards. You have cards that help you improve your credit when your credit is limited or damaged, okay? You have cards that save you money on interest. You were talking about low interest APR, okay? Low APR, rather. And you have cards that earn rewards. So the best card for you is one with features designed to meet your specific needs. Okay, Paul, I'm talking to you. Okay, Michelle, I'm talking to you. Ruben, I'm talking to you. What is what what are your specific needs? Talk to me about that. What? You want to save money. Okay. What about you, Paul? You want to earn rewards. Okay. 
So that's that's pretty good. So if you want to pre-qualify for any credit card easily, you need to know what kind of what kind of a card you that you should be after, right? Three general types: cards that help you improve your credit when it's limited or damaged. Cars that save you money on interest, cars that earn you rewards, okay? Now, if you want to build or rebuild credit, you can go for a student or a secure credit cards, for example. This works fantastically. Now, the limits are lower, though. When we talk about those uh, secure li- those secure credit cards or student credit cards, you're looking at limits in the three digits, like 300 or 400, and sometimes for four digits, like 1,000 maximum. If you want to save on interest, so you want to go for a low interest credit cards, right? You want to go for zero APR or you want to go for a balanced transfer card. So you want to seek pre-qualification on those type of cards. They are important. Here, the limits go a little higher because the card assumes that you have established credit. Okay. And if you want to earn rewards, you can go for a rewards credit card, a travel credit card, or a cashback credit card. So those are things you need to think about. So the bottom line is what? Boss, I'm talking to you. The bottom line is you want to narrow your choices by asking the right questions. Okay. Are you looking for a low interest credit card, a zero percent interest, a zero percent uh, credit card, a balance transfer credit card? Are you looking for a rewards credit card, a travel credit card, a cashback credit card? Talks to talk to me about what you need. Hello, I'm talking to you. You're talking to me. You got an answer here. Don't you try to be mute uh, to go mute on me? Don't be shy. I want you to answer me. What are you looking for? The third thing I want you to think about, right? So when we talk about applying for, I mean, you want to pre-qualify for any credit card easily. And, and that's the key word, easily. It has to be easy peasy lemon squeezy. Squeezy. Do you hear that? Squeezy. You want to understand the requirements of the credit cards you want to pre-qualify for. The requirements, okay? First of all, if you are a, if you are a sole proprietor, sole proprietorship, if you are a solo credit card applicant, you must be 21 years or older, right? I mean, this is basic. You must have a verifiable income source. Oh, yeah. You got to have a job. Now, I don't care if you, you don't need to have a nine to five. I mean, people think about, you know, the funny thing is people always, what was that? Well, of course, seasonal job applies. If you have a full-time job, if you have a part-time job, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A part time job applies. You know why? Because when we talk about credit card, we are speaking about liquidity. You got to have when we talk about income source, you talk about cash, right? You need to have the cash to repay whatever balance you charge, whatever expenses you charge on the card. And it doesn't matter as long as you have a legit job. If you have a legit job, the issuer will consider you. Okay, and uh, you you need a physical address. Okay, as a card applicant, you need a physical address. You need to have a job, a legit job, a, a full time, a part time. If you have a paid internship, that works also. You just gotta generate. You just gotta generate income. That's what it is. And the requirements you need to understand the requirements of the card you are trying to zero in on. Okay, you need to have your social, a social security number. That's just basic. Okay, remember though that credit requirements will vary by issuer and card. Some cards will want you to have a six hundred. 700 800 whatever depends on the cards depends on the sort of uh, target audience they are actually going after okay just make sure you don't you, you don't have too many recent new accounts this is really important this will damage your your chances of uh, being approved or even being pre-qualified so if you want to pre-qualify easily for any credit cards you want to reduce the the number of uh, recent accounts that you open okay and try to maintain good brand relationships especially with banks and credit unions because essentially if you really think about it they are the ones who act who actually issue credit cards right you have i mean now you have new have new players in the in the you know new players you have a upgrade and you have out some kind of fintechs they're trying to place but they're still small they're very very small but the large the bulk of the players right now is banks and the credit unions so you want to maintain a good relationship with those with those credit card issuers okay and one thing i want to say also is that you want to contact the issuer before if you want to apply let's say you want to pre let's say you just passed the pre-qualification they give you a positive answer and now you are interested in applying for real do it on the phone or do it at a branch don't try to do it online i want to talk to you now about the issuer in case you just join us i'm just boss i'm just talking to you today about how to pre-qualify for any credit card easily okay and so we talk about you want to focus on the card itself you want to understand what what kind of card you're looking for 
You want to have a clear understanding. You want to have a, you want to have a clear idea of the requirements of the card, right? You want to actually identify the issuer that best meets your needs. And this is quintessential. This phase constitutes, in my view, what I, again, based on our research and based on my own experience and the, and the experience of our team, this constitutes the fulcrum. It, this is the, the, uh, the, um, the cornerstone of a good strategy, the issuer, okay? And when we talk about issuers, there are three types. I just said it. You have a trifecta, right? With banks, big national banks being the majority here. With banks, you have also uh, credit unions. And last but not the least, you have uh, online lenders, a.k.a. fintechs. They're trying to really uh, play a little bit here. You know, they're just like, there are newbies. They're new, they're new kids on the block. Whatever, you know. But you want to choose the right issuer. And when we talk about choosing the right issuer, you got to pay attention to their annual fees. What are they charging for late payment? What are they charging for balance transfers? What are they charging for foreign transactions? Okay, fees are important because you're not going around just like because you know love it, dovey. You just you just love Amex and uh, you you love Chase or you love Navy Fed because you just love the brand name. They don't care about your name. You, they don't care about your ass. You shouldn't care about their ass too. But you want to care about the fees they're charging you. You want to care about the customer service. Hello, hello, customer service fees, APRs, credit limits. Those are important elements. Okay. Bottom line is when if you want to if you want to motivate I mean that's not the right word to motivate if you want to have a good relationship with uh, a credit card issuer please keep your balances low keep your credit card balances low with the issuer but also with other issuers okay this is important because we kind of go back to what we talked about in terms of credit utilization so your CUR your credit utilization ratio is important because that accounts for thirty percent of your FICO score. Okay, when you really think about it, and your and your payment history accounts for what, thirty five percent, and which is the next thing I want to talk to you about. You want to pay on time, all the time. Okay, I don't care if you're having a hard if you're having a hard time. If you <sighs> pay the minimum balance, okay, stay in the game, stay in the credit game, boss. I want you to stay in the game. Don't don't you get out? I want your ass to stay in the game, and you stay in the game by making payments all the time. You want to make payment on time all the time ideally you want to pay the full balance but what if what if stuff uh, stuff happens you can't make the, the full payment that's fine make the minimum payment let's talk about your FICO score if you want to uh, easily pre-qualify for any credit card I mean any credit card you want to pay attention to your FICO score okay this is an, a quintessential metric that will follow you till death. You, you heard it right, till death, okay? And the thing here is that uh, if you want to be pre, because see, pre-qualification pays attention to your credit score because they're not doing a hard pull on you, right? They're doing a soft pull, but the soft pull part of it, they will pick your credit score based on your social security number, okay? This will not affect your credit your credit history, but they still pay attention to your credit score to see if you are maybe the kind of uh, clients they're looking forward, they're looking for, okay? And so you want to actually uh, improve your credit score. And it, it all starts by having a clear idea of where you stand. Where are you right now on the spectrum? Are you on the 300? Where are you on the 300 to 850 spectrum? Talk to me about that. Don't you give me an approximation? Like I think I'm I'm in the 700s, or I'm in the 800s, or I'm the 600s. How old are you? Do you give me an oper- an uh, approximation when I ask your age? Do you tell me? You know I'm in my 40s. I'm in my uh, 30s. No, you know your age. So listen, from today on, I want you to know your credit score the same way you know your age. Okay, don't you try don't you let anybody tell you otherwise, okay? Because your credit score is going to follow you till death. I want to I, I want to emphasize that. So, you want to check your credit credit report. You have an opportunity to do this once a year on a website called annualcreditreport.com where you can request a free copy of your credit reports and you can review it. And I'm talking about TransUnion request a copy of credit reports from TransUnion, Experian, Equifax, you name it. Okay, they'll give it to you. Congress has mandated this; it, it has to be free once a year. If you don't want to do this once a year, you can sign up for a free credit provider service such as a uh, Credit Karma, 
you have nerd wallet you have wallet hub you have credit wise you have uh, you have gazillions i mean credit card issuers even allow you to check your credit score for free anyway okay so you want to improve your credit with uh, more with the more products you you have a uh, you want to diversify your credit mix okay you want to make payments on on time all the time you want to actually um you want to have um you know, how do you call it you want to have fewer inquiries on your credit report okay this is important so bottom line is you want to have a lower credit utilization ratio okay bottom line is credit card credit card credit card credit card usage has a great impact on your FICO score Okay, more so than a loan because a loan you just have to pay once a month but a credit card you're using this thing every single day sometimes you use it several times in a day so it is more accurate in terms of it, 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 it is um how do you call it it is a more accurate reflection of your financial responsibility i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere My folks to another session of the awesome Sudi kiwi show we are still having a fascinating conversation really fascinating conversation about how to pre-qualify for any credit card easily okay and the thing is that was that what i can't hear you you want to speak up oh yeah this is exactly what i'm going to talk about the debt counts the counts of debts you have so if you want to pre-qualify for any credit card easily you want to you want to maintain a lower number of debts and I'm talking about liabilities. I'm not talking about the quantity of the, the amount of debt you have. I'm speaking about the the actual number, the you know the finite number. What, how many debts you have? Talk to me. Do you even have an idea of how many uh, debts you have? How many? Five, nine, six, zero. Oh, lucky you. Who? What are you doing here? And you shouldn't be here in the first place. <laughs> Twelve. Okay. Well, you know the funny thing is, some people have no idea of how many. Debts, how many loans and credit cards and lines of credit they have to they have to pay every month you know why because they have automated everything everything is automated they don't actually check they just have a savings account or checking account uh, they have direct deposit into that account and they have all the loan payments and all the credit card payments that come out of that account this is a fantastic setup though if you can afford it okay but the thing is if you want to easily pre-qualify for any credit card you want to reduce your current debt count with a specific card issuer you want to apply with so for instance if you want to pre-qualify for a chase credit card you want to reduce your current debt count with the with the with chase okay do the same for your debt count in general in other words all debts that you have with the chase with navy fed with the pen fed and whatnot you want to actually reduce that and while doing so you want to reduce also your dti i have mentioned this before your debt to income ratio plays a quintessential role plays a pivotal role when when making sure that you are in a position where you are financially uh, financially uh, responsible DTI stands for debt to income ratio. It is basically a fraction that is a reflection of your um, your um, financial responsibility. Okay, your level of debt relative to your income. You also want to work on your CUR, your credit utilization ratio. I just spoke about that, which is really important. Also, the lower the better. DTI and CUR works in tandem. They works hand in hand in hand, and it's really important to keep them low. The lower the better. 30%, 25%, in some cases, 35%, it's right. So, big decision time, boss. Grandpa, grandma, dad, mom, I'm speaking to you. I want your ass to, to give me, to give me a, a clear answer. Big decision time, big decision time. What is your DTI? What is your CUR? What is your debt count? Do you have a, a clear idea of how many debts you are paying every month? Do you have a clear idea of how many credit cards you currently have or how many mortgages? I mean, you only have more, one mortgage or two mortgages, but how many uh, line of credit? How many HELOC do you currently have? Give me a clear answer here. Last but not the least, I want you I want to talk to you about your income. So the whole thing is, if you want to pre-qualify for any credit card easily, you got to work on your income. OK, and, and the good thing is you need to update your income on, on whatever uh, credit card issuer you currently have checking accounts or savings account with or even just regular credit cards 
I mean, if you take a bank like Web Bank, they have a lot of credit cards. You may not have a, a checking accounts with them or saving a savings account with them, but you have a credit cards with them. So if you have a credit card with them, you want to update your income. You know why? When you update your income, something fantastic happens. Something wonderful happens. What, what happens is that there is an algorithm that automatically crawls the data of all applicants, of all, um, I would say, cardholders. And if the algorithm realizes that your income has gone up or that your income has uh, been updated and that your income relative to, uh, because when they initially uh, approved you, they approved you based on an income that you, let's say you set at 30 grand. But if you change your income to 45 grand, what will happen is that you start having, you will start having a lot of a pre-qualification offers because they realize, hey, this person is banking right now. They, you know, we better really get uh, more credit card, uh, credit cards uh, offers to them. Okay. And that's why you want to automatically, systematically update your income. So anytime you have a, uh, a raise at work, you have a bonus, you have a, something positive, monetarily speaking, happening in your life. You want to update your, your credit card information, okay? Your income information. And you just make sure, though, never lie, okay? You want to make, because if the card issuer wants to uh, verify your income or want to verify source of employment, all that kind of stuff, if they ask questions and if you lie, you'll be in a bad situation. So you don't want to do that, okay? And there are many ways you can actually uh, increase your income from your regular nine to five. You can consider thinking, uh, let's say, uh, having a, a side gig, starting a side gig, working for Uber, driving for Uber, driving for Walmart, go local, you know, for Amazon Flex. You can actually be a tutor. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do. You can work online, you know, from the comfort of your home. The whole thing is you want to generate that extra paper, that extra revenue. To make sure that you're a, you are you know good position, okay. Think about also investments. This is a great opportunity. Also, investments are kind of cool, right? So money, 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 money. At the end of the day, it's all about money. Your income, your investments, your side gigs should generate enough revenue, enough income, so that the algorithm, the credit card issuer's algorithm, will recognize that hey, listen, this person is banking, and they will send you a credit card pre-qualification. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I'm just talking to you about how to easily pre-qualify for any credit card, okay? I give you an overview about the concept of pre-qualification. I spoke about the card you should look for, the requirements you should go after, the issuer, the FICO score, the debt counts, and last but not the least, your income. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.